What's up, everybody? This is Josh Taylor on the Josh Taylor CFB YouTube channel doing a follow-up to the write-up that I did for the six foot one, 220 junior quarterback out of North Carolina, Sam Howell. If you have not read my write-up yet, I highly encourage you to do so before or after this video. I'm going to put the link in the uh, description here so you can check that out. Uh, it's been a big hit so far, and I appreciate all of the uh, support, the reads, and the shares as well. And I just hope that this video can just bring you a little bit of what I saw when I was writing the write-up for Sam Howe. So what I really want to do in these videos, and it's only going to change as I do them more. Like I said, this is the very first one um, as I do more of the scouting academy and learn of how to watch tapes and what to look for. And then more of the tech side of really doing video recording, which I've never done before, like making highlight videos, um, which is really hard, by the way. Um, but just making more of that and just highlighting what I'm really seeing as I write these things. Um, it's only going to get better, so I appreciate y'all tuning in. Uh, but feel free to uh, comment and uh, let me know what you like, what you want to see more of, and then also comment some players. But like I said, Sam Howell was first up, one of my favorite quarterbacks in this draft coming up, so I was excited to watch his games. Now, when you're watching film on a player, it is easy just to look at the stats and say, all right, this is what he did. This is the kind of quarterback he is. But it doesn't tell you the entire story of his three-season career at North Carolina, coming in as a freshman, starting right away, putting up big numbers, creating a relationship with some awesome weapons who are doing their own big things in the league right now. And then his, his uh, final season at North Carolina as a junior, losing all of his weapons and having to come to a uh, transfer running back with Ty Chandler, having his wide receiver three, Josh Downs, become his wide receiver one and become a very good, very productive wide receiver who actually uh, set some records, broke history, became the fourth wide receiver in the ACC ever to catch over 100 yards in a single season. He finished with 101 um, because of the bowl game. Um, but just... Seeing how his career progressed at North Carolina, just seeing more in depth of what happened, what all was there. I can tell you how many yards he passed for. I can tell you how many yards he ran for, but it doesn't tell you the whole story. Um, so first off, let's just take a quick look at the difference of the weapons that he had from 2020 season as a sophomore to his 2021 season as a junior. So stats wise for Sam Howell, you know, like I said, freshman season, he came out on fire did not run the ball much at all. Only had 94 carries for 35 yards and a touchdown. He leaned more on his arm, and rightfully so, because he had two running backs in the backfield with Javante Williams and Michael Carter, who just lit it up. Same thing in the 2020 season. I only ran for 92 yards. I mean, 92 carries for 146 yards and five touchdowns. But if you look at the passing stats, you know, 3,641 yards, 38 touchdowns, seven interceptions as a freshman coming in right away, putting up big stats, big production. That's one thing that some other quarterbacks in this draft, like Kenny Pickett um, and then even um, Matt Corral, you see these dips in production. You see some worries with interceptions. You see some gaps with the numbers. But Sam Howell produced every single season, and it changed. So people look at that 2021 season and say, look, he only passed for 3,056 yards, 24 touchdowns, and nine receptions. Like, why? What happened there? But you look at the carries. He came into that season knowing, I lost my two running backs. I have a transfer from Tennessee with Ty Chandler coming over, who had a great season, by the way. But he knew, I need to step up and fill this hole in the run game and use my feet more and evolve as a quarterback going to the next level in the league, hopefully. So he carries the ball 183 times for 828 rushing yards and 11 touchdowns for his 2021 junior season. Outstanding. So I'm okay with coming off you know, your arm game. And like I said, you had Daz Newsom and Deami Brown going to the league. And now Josh Downs is your first wide receiver. So take a look at the production wise from all the players that he had in that 2020 season into his 2021 season. 
like I said, Javante Williams, Michael Carter, Deami Brown, Daz Newsom, they're gone. Josh Downs goes from seven catches for 119 yards and three touchdowns to an astounding 101 catches for 1,335 yards and eight touchdowns. He elevated to that wide receiver one, stepped up. He's going to be a great wide receiver going into the draft next year. Excited to look at his tapes as well. But for Sam Howell transitioning, he lost so much production from 2020 to 2021. So he stepped up, did what he had to do, used his legs a lot more. I saw more improvement in a couple things outside of the numbers. And these are the strengths of Sam Howell that I really saw as I watched his tapes. He has that baseball background that a lot of guys in the NFL, whether it's Russell Wilson, um, Jameis Winston is another one known, Baker Mayfield played baseball. There's a lot of NFL quarterbacks that played baseball, especially some of these younger guys that were in college, played both. Some even got drafted to the MLB, um, but have gone the NFL route. So you see that transitioning with a throwing motion, with the, the trigger, with the quick release. I think that translates well to the NFL. He has an above average arm strength, an above average ball placement, which you'll see on, especially on deep throws. Um, he anticipates his routes on his throws. His wide receivers very, very rarely have to stop their route to catch the ball and then accelerate again. You see a lot of times his wide receivers catch it exactly where it needs to be so they can keep running their route and get a ton of yak. Rack up the yak should have been North Carolina's motto because with Dami Brown, Daz Newsom, and then Josh Downs in 2021, just yak all the time. Just so many yards after the catch. Now, he has that high competitive toughness. You see that a lot of times, whether he's running the ball, or they're down in a game, or Virginia Tech is blitzing him throughout the entire game. He doesn't give up. He has a high competitive competitive toughness to come back, to lead his team, no matter what the score is, third and 16, doesn't matter. End of the game. Sam Howell balls out to the top of his ability at all times. Um, I said that he has a quick trigger. When he knows where he wants to go, he will pull that trigger. He does not hesitate often at all. He will pull it and put it exactly where he needs to. He has above average mobility, uh, especially his contact balance is a thing you'll see. Oftentimes, he gets hit by one guy. He will bounce off of him and keep going. He has a great physical running ability, which I love about him. He has clean mechanics and stance more so, you know, like I said, with the baseball background, when he has pressure in his face, he doesn't need to like step forward in his deep throws to elevate arm strength. He can be leaning back. He can have people in his face and still deliver a tight spiral throw with the perfect stance. No, it doesn't matter how much pressure is in his face. He will throw a bomb without hesitation. Um, and he used a lot of RPO in North Carolina, which you'll see in the tapes. Um, and you see that a lot in the NFL. I like that. I like being able to translate that. Uh, but also, with the strengths, he has some weaknesses. So he locks on his first read sometimes too long and sometimes too often. I think that was more so in the 2020 season. I think in 2021, I'll show you a couple examples. That got much better than it did in 2019 and 2020. He was locking on his first progression a lot. Now, he still did in 2021. So I want to see more of that. Because in the NFL, you're going to be asked to go from progressions one to two. And then sometimes two to three, not just one to two like in college where they you know, draw the play up for you. I uh, said so he can force the throws and be over aggressive to make something from nothing. You'll see that in the Virginia Tech game, um, just not living to, for another down. And it was early in the season, and he had all of his new weapons. So just keep that in mind. Um, he pats the ball before he starts his throwing motion. You'll see that a lot of times in this. I'm not sure what it is. I don't know if it's a baseball thing. It's just a... I have it just patting the ball before he starts his motion. I think if he can eliminate that, his throwing motion can get even crisper. Um, sometimes he lacks pocket awareness and he leaves too early. Sometimes he bounces around a little bit too much. Um, he needs to sit more in the pocket, trust his protection, which rightfully so. His protection was really bad um, a lot of times. So don't really blame him too much on that. Um, and he's not elite at anything, but he's well above average in everything. So what I'm saying is he has great arm strength. By no means is he exactly Josh Allen. Now, he can run like Josh Allen, which a lot of people have been saying. Um, he's not going to run like Lamar Jackson. Like He's not like a Lamar Jackson runner with a Josh Allen uh, throwing strength. He's just like a tier below that. Like He is a good passer, and he is a very physical 
runner. He's well above average in everything he does. He's just not elite. He's not like a Pat Mahomes. Can he be? Who knows? Can Nobody knows how anyone's going to take that qualitative leap going to the next level. And it's always something to keep an eye on. You can't project how much someone's going to grow as a player, as a person going into the league. But he has the tools there to succeed in the NFL. So let's take a look at some tapes and see exactly what I'm talking about with these examples. Let's take a look at some tapes. 2020 week one versus Syracuse. This here is where he could be possibly a little too aggressive. And he trusted Deami Brown to win this route, which rightfully so. Deami Brown's a great wide receiver, uh, especially when he was at North Carolina. But this, if you see it right here, Deami Brown has the inside on the slant. Now, the thing is, this is a very physical, lengthy corner. He plays this exceptionally well. You see here, Sam Howell knows where he wants to go. Tommy Brown's on the inside. That DB is just playing him so physical. Tips the ball up. It's intercepted. But Mel Fuanu is a long-range corner. He's going to play you physical. Here, Sam House showing that NFL throw on the run ability. Moves up the pocket. Look at that. Pressure is right there in his face. Moves up. Has no hesitation. He's still looking downfield while he's stepping up in the pocket. Rolls out to his right. Throws the ball on the run. Boom. Guy wide open at the 30, and he just runs it up the sideline, tackled down at the six or seven yard line. Just a good play by Sam Howell. Now, here, Sam Howell, 2020 Orange Bowl versus Texas AM. These are the big boys. This is the SEC. Texas AM has a very good D line and a linebacker core. The year before last, and especially this year, they've got some studs going into the draft. Now, this is where Sam Howell is too aggressive, forces the interception. It is third and 17, super early in the game. It's the first quarter. It's 0-0. This is a play where you just live for another down. Like, the drive is over, unless you do something crazy here. But it's third and 17. Yes, he has a lot of pressure. Now, look, he has a running back down there. That's the check down. That's where he needs to go. For some reason, he tries pushing it around like the 25-yard line. I don't know where he was going with that throw, but the pressure in front of him uh, doesn't help at all either. But still, you have to check it down to your running back on that play. Here, Sam Howell creates plays with his feet. Second and five. They're down 7 nothing. Yeet! Runs to the right. This is that little bit of an appetizer, a little teaser of what's to come in the 2021 season. Sam Howell says, I got something for y'all. Here's some more of it. Fourth and three. It is a uh, draw out of the shotgun, which they did a lot uh, with how. And this just shows his run vision. Steps back, looks to the right, fakes it, sets up the draw, lets the blocks develop, lets the tunnel open up where it needs to be. He sees where he's got his vision. Yeet! Up the middle. But look at that. He doesn't just pick up the first down and lay down, slide. Jukes out the guy, goes to the right, misses that first guy. Takes a hit, bounces off of him. That's what I'm talking about with that contact balance and the physical running. Here, beautiful play. I love this play by how RPO pulls it out. He sees he has that screen, but there's that guy number 16 right there. Look at this pump fake. Yeet! That boy gets more air than Jordan on that play. As a defensive player, you are taught to not leave your feet. He thought he had a pick six right here. This here, bucket dropper. I'm busy, whatever you want to call it. Look at this. Sam Howell. Oh, my Lanta. It's dropped. Psych. He caught that ball. I don't know how he caught it. But look at this. This this uh view right here. Boom. Put it where only his wide receiver can either catch it or drop it. It's either an incompletion or it is a touchdown. And somehow he comes up with that. I think it's Daz Newsom. Somehow comes up with that catch, but still just putting it where your wide receiver can make a play and you do not let the defense make a play. So gorgeous dime dropper there by Hal. Love to see it. Pre-snap motion. Ooh, I love pre-snap motion. This is why. Because you see that defender moving with him. He's running. He said, man, I got, I got a lot of field to cover. Goes with him. 
Sam Howell knows that. Look at all that confusion going on right there about the 38, 39 yard line. There's two guys moving. They're trying to figure out what to do. And right behind them, just slips right up behind them. But this is what I love about Howell, not only reading the defense, he's throwing it right here. He is winding the ball up right here when his wide receiver is in between those two guys. But you know what he does? Leads his wide receivers, lets them run their routes. They are not stopping to wait for the ball to come to them. They are getting it in stride and getting yards after the catch. Now, here we go. Sam House saw the pressure, moves the pocket, launches the bomb, sees pressure in the middle. I'm going to roll out to the left. Holy cannoli. I'm going to point to my wide receiver and tell him exactly where I'm going to put this thing. Yay! Oh, my God. But this this is even better from the other view, and I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you why. So that's not me drawing. I don't know how to do that. This is the broadcast team. They are circling how bad the offensive line is and showing how they got pressure on them. They, they, the, the pressure of the D-line won their battle. But the thing is, Sam Howell saw that, rolls to his left, Let's this guy run back into his offensive lineman. But here's the beautiful part right here. Stops, sets his feet, points to his wide receiver. Now look at these two guys. And the broadcast team pointed this out as well. Sam Howell is looking downfield. He cannot throw this to the right of the wide receiver. Why? Because that DB on the right side has more room to catch up to the ball and make a play. The left side DB stands no chance. And if that wide receiver cuts back to the left and gets away from the guy to the right, creates more separation, this is a home run touchdown. And sure enough, it is because Sam Howell said, yo, I got you. Run to the left where no one can get you. I'm going to drop you this easy seven. Love it. So 2020 season, we saw a lot of good. Sam Howell saw what I wanted to see more of in 2021 with his feet with his progressions, his decision-making sometimes was a little too um, aggressive. Now, Virginia Tech, I was at this game, and it was insane. Now, they're down early because Virginia Tech drove first drive. It was like four minutes long, whatever, scored easily. They're down 7 nothing. Sam Howell here, boom, zip, tight window throw, leaves his wide receiver, first down. Josh Downs is a big part of this offense in 2021. Now, Safety moves up. Watch this. Safety moves up. He knows the wide receiver is going to be open because that, that corner has no safety help behind him anymore. The D is expecting a run. It's first down. It's hostile. It's loud. You're not going to throw the ball at your own 10. You've been getting hit all game. You've got zero points. You haven't looked good as an offense so far. Same house said, I don't care. I got my guy in stride. Gosh, downs all day long. Here's a big boy throw right here. Watch this. Just over a guy's head. Over the guy's head. And drops it where only the wide receiver can catch it. But then the DB just takes, just goes to the ground with him and takes the ball from him. It makes no sense. I have no idea what that wide receiver is doing. He caught the ball. He won. Sam Howell threw a beautiful pass. But Olsen, my guy, you've got to just hold on to that ball. I, I don't I don't get that play at all. Over the guy's head, boom, Olsen catches it. And then DB just takes away from him. So I, I don't put that interception on Howell at all. See something pre-snap, first progression's not there. He takes it, looks to the right, looks to the left. <whistles> Bow. Has Josh Downs in stride. Love it. Here, D got the turnover. Scouts have high concerns on the tip pass. I don't think there's any high concerns for Sam Howell, but scouts pointed out, here's a tip pass that could have, uh, well, I think that was intercepted, actually. Um, look at this. I don't put this on height, though. Just really bad O-line play. Look at this. The D-line just got his hand up there, so I, I don't put that on Sam Howell at all. Here's more of that quick trigger RPO. Whoop. Just a second. No, Josh Downs has his guy beat. Hits him in stride. Money. Perfect read needs to come out a second. Ooh, is that deep ball? Mm. 
he had him on third down. There's a flag, but look, if he gets rid of that ball right around here, and he throws it in between the middle there, between those two hashes, I feel like his wide receiver goes and gets that one. Game on the line. Gets the pressure. Boom! Fourth and six. Hits his man. Wait, <laughs> there's a flag. It's coming back. It's fourth and 11. Game's over, right? Fourth and 11. Sam Howell does it again. Takes a snap. Has pressure. Steps up. Goes to the left. <laughs> Watch this throw. If Mahomes does this, you're seeing it 20 times on Monday. Look at this. Rolls out to his left. And look at his ball placement. Holy smokes. Throws it behind the defensive ends. Back. <sharp inhale> Caught. Picks up the first down. Game saved. That is nuts. That was wild to me. Here, rolls out to the right. It's supposed to be a halfback screen to the left side because he expects everyone to come. It's busted play, gets pressured, tries to throw the ball away, but instead throws the game away. Cannot do that with Sam Howell. You're coming back or driving down the field. It's 40 seconds left. You're only down seven. You're trying to score the game-winning touchdown. You had the timeouts. I don't know if he was just trying to throw the ball away because he didn't want to lose yardage and end up throwing an interception that ends the game. Just can't do that. Cannot throw the game away like that. And that is how the Virginia Tech game ends. But like I said, it's a new offense. It's early in the season. It's your first game. You're still you know, trying to get in sync. You're trying to click. The offensive line's not playing well. There's just a lot going on. Now here's a 2021 Dukes Mayo Bowl versus South Carolina. Here's some RPO pass. 52-yard dime. That is dropped by this wide receiver, who I'm not a fan of at all, by the way. Hits him right in the chest. If that's any wide receiver like Downs, he's catching that. RPO pass. Accuracy. Touch. And a gorgeous catch by Downs. That is an insane catch by Downs. Being able to look backwards like that. But look at this. Sam Howell puts it exactly where he needs to be so he can make the big play. Now, here's an example of Sam Howell working his progressions. He's looking to the left, looks to the right, at that little pump fake, boom. Likes what he sees, hits him in stride. Pocket present. This is what I'm talking about. Sometimes he just didn't read it too much. Goes to the left side. And I, say, I see what he was trying to do, but he just did not read it well. Sometimes he was too aggressive. Third and 20. You're only down 18-7. to seven. He rolls out to the left here and just... Chucks it downfield because he thinks he sees something. Could have easily been picked. It could have gone the other way. Now, here's better decision-making. Perfect timing. Second 14, that's a first down. Here, I said uh, quick middle clock, ball placement, and some touch. Probably the best throw of the entire game. Dome. That is an NFL throw right there. Puts it only where his wide receiver can catch that. It is a hellacious catch. We got off script playability by Sam Howe. Fakes it, runs it oh, oh, to the left. Oh. Being able to throw on the run, pick up first downs, make plays. There's a little tight window throw here. Watch this. Downs in the middle. Boom. That is a tight window throw. But he hit him right in stride, and look at the yards after catch. I cannot say it enough. North Carolina did that so well. But you can't take credit away from Sam Howell because those throws were uh, amazing. Here we go. Howell, big run ability, not afraid to take hits. And here is one of the, the best throws, arm strength-wise, by Sam Howell that everyone wants to pay attention to. Look at this. Doesn't need much. Doesn't have this huge windup for it. Just kind of lets it rip. Just a gorgeous throw by Howell. About 60 yards in the air. That's what excites me on Sundays. That is what I can't wait to see from Sam Howell. So we saw a lot of good. We saw some bad of Sam Howell um, while he was at North Carolina. But I really like the improvement that I saw. You know, ignore the numbers. Look from his sophomore season to his junior season. 
I saw the improvement with the hand he was dealt, especially with all of his guys gone. I think he got through his progressions better. I think he made better decisions at times. Um, I think that he used his feet more and he utilized that weapon and knew when to use it a lot better than he did the first two seasons when he didn't use his feet at all. Um, I think the small critique going forward would be to stop patting the ball before he uh, starts throwing motion. That's one thing I really want him to uh, eliminate to get his passing even better, which would excite me as a scout or someone that drafts the same how knowing that his passing game can get even better. Um, but he's shown the arm strength. He's shown the, the mental discipline, being able to, you know, progress and look through the defenses, read stuff, pre-snap during the play, knowing where he wants to go, leading his wide receivers and stride. There's just a lot of good things that Sam Howell does. Now, just like any other quarterback, he needs to go to a good landing spot. But I think he's shown that he doesn't need to just go somewhere that's loaded at wide receiver, tight end, you know, running back to be able to put up production. I think he showed last season that he can take in a transfer, a new guy. He can make his wide receiver three a dominant wide receiver one in the ACC with 101 catches on the season and still put up big numbers and do what he needs to do, whether it's run the ball or throw the, the ball when he needs to. So that's what really impressed me with Sam Howell. I think that he can separate himself even more at the Senior Bowl, and I'm looking forward to um, hopefully talking to him, asking him some questions about some things I have concerns with. Um but I think he can grow even more. I think he is a safer pick moving forward, um, but he's going to be asked to do more progressions. Instead of one to two, he's going to be able, need to be able to go from two to three at the next level. So, um, But I like, I like his movement. I like his mobility. That's something that you need in the NFL. You need to be able to stretch the ball down the field, and he has that arm strength where he can hit a 60-yard bomb no problem. Um, like I said, he's not like the elite arm strength of like a Josh Allen or Pat Mahomes or anything like that, but he's still very well above average at everything he does. And I think he can get better. I think he can take that qualitative leap to the next level in the NFL. So I think he's going to be a middle first to late first round guy. I don't think that the quarterbacks are going to go as soon as people think that they will and have in the past, which, you know, rightfully so people need a quarterback, there's just so many other good positions in this draft. Um, and it's not that the quarterbacks aren't as good. Obviously, you know, you don't have your Trevor Lawrence, your Trey Lance, um, your Zach Wilson in the draft. But I still think there's really good quarterbacks in this draft. And I think Sam Howell is going to be taking around that 20 range. So I like him moving forward. I would not mind him being a quarterback uh, for my team, especially as a Washington fan. But any team that needs a quarterback that runs a good spread offense, even utilizes the RPO a little bit. I, I think he's shown that he can run the ball and he can throw the ball exceptionally well, um, especially with the ball placement and arm strength. So Sam Howell moving forward, I'm excited to see how he progresses. But guys, I appreciate y'all tuning in on this episode. I'm sure I'll do even more write-ups on Sam Howell after the Senior Bowl. Just my thoughts on how he performed uh, throughout the week at practice and then, of course, on that game that Saturday. Um, and like I said, guys, this is the first video. It's only going to get better as I do more of the scouting academy and learn more of watching tapes, what to look for, and just breaking the game down. And even the video aspect, just learning more of how to um, show y'all what I see and really talk y'all through what I notice. So appreciate y'all tuning in. Appreciate all the shares, um, whether it's the write-up or the videos. But guys, keep tuning in and uh, even comment a player that you want to see moving forward. And I'll be sure to uh, take a look and uh, break it down for y'all. So I appreciate it. Catch y'all next time.